Good evening, sir. I am Ayan Manna. Today we have made a presentation on parse tree and ambiguous grammar. This is our content. What is parse tree? Example of parse tree: left derivation tree, right derivation tree with example and ambiguous grammar. Now, what is a parse tree? A parse tree or derivation tree is an ordered rooted tree that represent the syntactic structure of a string according to some context-free grammar. Now we have an example grammar. Given the grammar is like G equal to G, T, P, and H, where so there are four types of the grammar where V is a variable or non-terminal symbol, T is the terminal symbol, P set of production rules, and H is the start symbol. And then the production rule is like that. S given zero B and A zero A gives one A A and can also give epsilon or the empty symbol. The B gives zero A A. So here S is the start symbol. The variable are B and A and then the terminal symbol are. Zero and one. The and then terminals and then the for this given grammar here. This is the derivation tree that is formed. So this is how we form a derivation tree for this grammar. Let us know how main things about derivation tree. First, we one is the root vertex. The root vertex must be labeled by the start symbol. So the root vertex is the first vertex of the derivation tree. So it should be labeled by the start symbol. Here our start symbol is S. The root vertex S, and then the next one, the vertex they are labeled by the non-terminal symbol. So the order node this. One the vertices these are labeled by the non-terminal symbol or the variable which are a and b. So wh wherever you are seeing this a and b, these are the vertices, and then we have the label are by the terminal symbol or by the epsilon. So the lab leaves are the ending node or the ending vertices like. For example, here we see that this vertices, it is a ending ending vertices. Means these vertices does not have any more children. So those vertices which does not have any children, they are known as the leaf leaf. So the vertices are labeled by terminal symbol or the epsilon. So we see that here which vertices labeled by zero and one. Epsilon is a leaf, zero one and epsilon is a leaf. So this is how we label the vertices in the derivation tree. Okay, now let's see how this derivation tree form this grammar. So first we start the start the symbol start the symbol which is S, and we see that. S gives zero and B, so we see that S gives zero and B. These two vertices become the children of the root vertices, vertices. S and then we have B over here, and from B production that production that we have give we can give zero A A. So B gives zero. A and A, okay. And then this zero is a terminating symbol or terminal symbol. So you can leave it as it is. And then we have two variables A A, and we see that uh, A gives one A A. So this A, I will say that it gives. A A so these are the
the three children of the vertices a over here and also we see that a gives epsilon so here i will just write that this a gives epsilon gives epsilon and then now we we'll left with two a's here again and we want to end this derivation p we will say that a gives epsilon because we see that a can give epsilon here so this is how you form the derivation p for the given grammar okay and then there are two type of derivation p that we need to know that left derivation p and right derivation p so next part will my friend silvadru will explain thank you arun for for introducing me and now i am starting with the left derivation p at first a left derivation p is obtained by applying production to the leftmost variable in each step now we will see this with the help of an example uh we have to generate this string a a b a a from the given grammar where s gives a capital a s or s can also give small a capital s capital s or s can also give terminal point or epsilon a can give s small b and capital a or a can also give small b and small a now let us start with the left derivation tree as we all know that the root vertex must be the start symbol so here we have the root vertex as s now we can see that s uh, gives us a s s this uh, uh, thing so if we put a s s uh, we write this here a s s these are the first uh, uh, nodes and now we have two s s here from one s we here we uh, already have one a for the string a a b a a this a we will uh, we will see this later and uh, this s gives us another a a s this is a a s when it gives a a s we get the two a's from this string the first two a's a and d this is the a this is the a now the a this a gives b and a from this b and a we got a a b a now our string is almost completed a a b a now we need another a so this s this s is generated from this s that because this s gives a a s so this s gives us another a s s why we choose a s s why not a a s because if we choose a a s s then we can give this s uh, we can see that this s gives us epsilon so as our uh, string is completed and we have this we got the string so we can easily uh, make this s terminal points so we give them epsilon and we can uh, now our string is ready we have a a b a a and now uh, we can also give epsilon to this s uh, this is uh, the example of left derivation tree now starting with right derivation tree a right derivation tree is obtained by applying production to the rightmost variable in each step now we are seeing the ex same example we have to make the string a a b a a from the given grammar the grammar is same here s gives a a s a s s and epsilon a gives s b a and b a so in the case of right derivation tree we have to apply the production to the rightmost variable this uh, starting point s gives us a s s so what is the rightmost variable the rightmost variable is this s uh, i am showing with the mouse and this s gives us a a s this is a a s it uh, gives us this one so we have to again go for the rightmost variable uh, we have generated a and a this is a a now uh, going to the rightmost variable this s gives us a s s from here we can see that a s s so and this a gives us b a this is the rightmost variable this is the next uh, variable which is after rightmost 
so now we can use this variable and we we can see that from the grammar that a generates b a so we write that b a it is almost similar to the left derivation key there is a little bit difference because we use this uh, rightmost uh, product pool, um, option so now we can see that from here we get a a b a a now our string is ready we have received from the parse tree a a b a a and now we can uh, make this as epsilon because we have seen from we have seen from the grammar that s gives epsilon this is the uh, grammar and we make this epsilon now uh, right right derivation tree and left derivation tree i think i have explained now my friend akash is going to explain us ambiguous grammar now continue akash thank you thank you shilvabhu Good afternoon, sir. Myself, Akash Bhakti, and my topic is ambiguous grammar. About ambiguous grammar, so what we mean by ambiguous grammar? A grammar is said to be ambiguous if there exist two or more derivation t for a starting omega. That means two or more left derivation t. Okay, in the last lecture we have studied about derivation t, and we saw how we can draw the duration trans for the string and Grammar told me say that we have a grammar given, and that is a string omega that can be generated from this grammar, and if this omega can be derived from two or more names. Derivation key then that grammar is said to be ambiguous. So when we mean two or more derivation key, we should keep in mind that they should be both left derivation key. It's not that you form one using a left derivation key and other using a right derivation key. Then it is said to be an ambiguous grammar. Okay, so now let us take a simple example to understand this in a better way. So here we have an example. We have grammar G, which is given like this. It has S as a non-terminal symbol for the variable, and it has terminal symbol. It plus G. D plus and this multiplication sign and we have P as the production rule and S is the starting symbol and the production rule is given like this S given S plus and S can also given S into string. We can also given A and you can also given B. Now we want to generate the string. We want we generate and let P in how many way we can. Generate this string. Okay, so let us start with the start symbol, which is L, and I will say that S given S plus, and I will start from this production S given S plus, and okay, I need to get a plus A into B. Now this is what I need to get, and I am forming the left derivation tree. And I got this a plus and S. Now this is let me write it down. It is plus and I have a another S over here. And I need a into B now for this. Let me further explain. This is S using the production rule. We say that S given S into S B. S will be expanded as S into S. And now I will replace this S by If because we saw so this I will write down as it is this S I will replace it will and into replace it with B now I can do because the production rule say S can A would be into given that will be replaced by B okay so now I am getting the string is plus into B which is the string I wanted to generate it okay. So this is one way I can generate the string. Now let's see another way in which can generate. I will again start with the start symbol. The symbol plus. Now I am having a plus a into a. Now this is over here. I will replace. It will be a because a can be a so a plus and this is into. Let me just. 
write down and they are now this is over here let me replace if we again a plus into s and this final s i will replace it will be because yes given b so a plus and into b so now i am getting by seeing a plus into b which is a string and i was into generated so we see that this string a plus into b we are generated using two derivation key first i choose the production rule is plus and if i would could get the string and even when i choose and when we have seen the both the case we use the left arrow derivation key so using the left derivation key we were able to derive the grammar is ambiguous or right so this is example of n and because grammar are i hope it was clear to you and thank you sir now shilbojo continue please thank you akash it seems that we have come to an end of our presentation this is our road map how we have made the ppt uh, and the card paper and this shows the team presentation it was a team presentation from oyan manna akash bakchi krishna gopal dash and shilbojo chakravarti at last we want to thank you sir for guiding us in every need and thank you for patience listening thank you sir our ppt is done thank you very good presentation